NCAA championship game between the defending champion Fulton Falcons from Knoxville taking on the Greenbrier Bobcats. Hi everybody, Willie Donick here with you along with Pat Sperduto and Ron Adelite to give you all the coverage of day two of the action here for the state championships in football of Tennessee. And if it's anything like day one, we are going to have some exciting football. Congratulations to the DCA Wildcats and also the Alcoa Tornadoes for getting state titles last night. Let's first turn to Ron Adelot, who won a state championship last year with Hillsborough. And coach, you're playing at high noon today if you're the Fulton Falcons and Greenbrier. And you're not used to that. Most teams play, of course, on Friday night. What does that do to your schedule and your routine? Well, the first two games will both be at a time-wise disadvantage because of the, the time starts usually on Friday night. It also throws off your weekly schedule. But kids are more resilient than adults, and usually the adrenaline will flow and uh, and things work themselves out. And we talked about this yesterday some. It's important, I'm sure, to calm your team down and make it as normal as possible so kids don't get too excited. Absolutely, and it's tough because the whole routine, the warm-up, and the whole process is just a whole lot different. So it's, you know, you really have to, you really have to work hard at keeping their heads in the game, especially getting to the game. Once the ball's kicked off, usually, usually they're fine. The teams that have been here are definitely at an advantage over the teams that have not because they know the process. And it's a perfect segue to Pat Sperduto. Fulton is a team that has been here. This is their third straight year in the title game. They won it all last year, and they know what to do. Yeah, it's a little bit of uh, experience versus inexperience. Greenbrier reminds me a little bit of the Hickory and Hoosiers, you know. It's a... Uh, they're just, uh, it's their first time through, and they're, they're really excited, but they can't forget why they're here and what they're trying to get. Now we look at Fulton with their one-two punch in the backfield, two guys that have played in this title game before, Jam Fine and Tyrone Cobb. Yeah, Jam Fine, a little thund <laughs> thunder and lightning right there. Lightning Jam Fine, he's a speed guy. He'll work the edges, string the field long, open up some gaps inside, and that segues right to Tyrone Cobb, the big bruising fullback, and he'll pound it up the middle, and you see the combined yards, 2,000 yards. So both those guys will see an equal amount of carries. Both of those guys, very important to the Fulton defense as well. Now as we look at Greenbrier, Jacob Aldridge is the quarterback. He's played different positions in his career, but he has fit in well at QB this year for the Bobcats. Without, without question, he is the nucleus of this offense. He's the key, and Coach Coatney's staff at Fulton said that they have to contain him. They have to work the edges, get a push up the middle, and make sure he does not escape when he has to throw because he can hurt him. And Roger Herndon, of course, Mr. Everything for Greenbrier. Two years in a row, Mr. Football at the 3A level. 2,500-plus all-purpose yards. He punts, he plays safety, he can do it all. He, he really does do it all. And offensively, he's a stud, no question. But defensively, his, his, his addition defensively and his plays that he makes defensively might be the difference for Greenbrier. Fulton won this whole thing last year under Buck Coatney. Greenbrier lost in the Final Four. They're excited to be here. The opening kickoff is coming up next. It's the Falcons and the Bobcats from Floyd Stadium. Ready? Ready? Hey, this young man right here has been a blessing to the team, amen. The Fulton Falcons talking it over in their locker room. They want another ring. You know who that was? I think that was Reggie Cobb. How about that? Reggie Cobb, of course, the famous running back, Cobb and Webb. From the UT days back in the late 80s, early 90s. And he's a, he has two brothers playing in this game. And of course, nine of the ten coaches on the Fulton staff played for Fulton. And that is something that's rare these days. But you talk about having a direct connection with the program. Fulton has got it. Now let's go down to Mark for our sideline update. Mark White is standing by for the injury report. Thanks, Willie. The injury report, as always, brought to you by Premier Orthopedic. We'll start with the Fulton Falcons, the defending champions. Josh Newman, number 60, is wearing a cast on his hand. They say that is for preventative measures only. He did have surgery back in October on that hand, but should be fine. And you mentioned Reggie Cobb. Well, his younger brother, Terrence, playing running back for the Falcons. He's been battling a hamstring injury, but he has been practicing all week, and uh, he should be good, good to go as well. On the Greenbrier side, number 32, Kyle Gaines has an ACL injury. He played long snapper last week. They're hoping to get him a little more involved this week on the defensive end. Also number 40, Clint Russell, MCL. He uh, tore it in week four. He tweaked it again in the first round of the playoffs, but he will be out there today on defense as well. Once again, that is your premier orthopedic injury report. And thanks a lot, Mark. Greenbrier won the toss, but they have elected to uh, defer for the second half. So Greenbrier will kick off to Fulton to get things started here. Greenbrier on the year is 13-1. The only loss they had 
was to White House, a 4A team that got beat in the semifinals uh, last weekend. So a very, very quality loss and, there. They lost House, that one 29-13. Weren't, weren't they undefeated this year up until that point? Up until last week, absolutely. Meanwhile, Fulton was 2-2 two and two in the early going. And Buck Cotney was thinking about just trying to get back to the playoffs, let alone defend right. your state title. But then they really got it in gear, have not lost since. And their big deal, they lost to Austin East on their home field back in early September, then bounced back and won at Austin East in the quarterfinals 28-21. And that was the big signature moment for the year. Right, and, and you know what? It's a well, both these teams are very well coached. Buck Cotney's been here three years, and there's a reason why he's been here three years. And you know, his players know how to get here. They knew if they stayed the course, good things would happen, and sure enough, they did. Elliot Bishop, who was back deep, actually transferred from Austin East, moved to go to play for Fulton. And he is back to receive the kickoff from Chris Tucker, and we are underway for the 3A state title. And this one is taken oh. by Marcus Patton, and he is hit hard by the Bobcats, and you can hear that Bobcat crowd getting into the game. Here's to you, Mr. Robertson. That's Devin Robinson. Right here, watch the return, and then here comes Devin Robinson. Hello. So just 11 yards on the return. And so at the 19-yard line, Fulton will go to the work. Their quarterback is Ish Young. He's an interesting story. He was red hot last week through three touchdown passes. But he was not the starting quarterback all year long. He lost his job in week three, won it back in week eight. And here's the give. It's a jam fine. Grinding forward and a good gain on first down. And we'll look at the Fulton Falcon offense. The starting lineup is brought to you by Wendy's. Here's the offensive line. Ash, Key, Engel, Cooper, and Higgins. Engel is the experienced one. He's played in all three championship games. The backs and receivers, Fine and Cobb in the backfield. Demarcus Matthews is the best threat going down the field. He's got a bunch of touchdown catches. Fulton will throw it a lot. And one, th one thing that Coach Williams said, yeah, they'll throw it, but he's more worried about the screens and the draws because that's where he can get gashed. Second down and two. Young on a quick toss outside to Matthews. Oh, what a great block. And the little bubble screen gets a first down for the Falcons. And we'll look at the Greenbrier Bobcat defense, which thrives on speed. They are not very big. Cole, Robertson, Osborne, and Stevens up front. None weigh more than 225. The linebackers, Prine, Pig, and Russell. Pig will play on both sides of the ball extensively. In the secondary, Jacob Aldridge, the quarterback, Roger Herndon, the main tailback. So again, two A players for the Bobcats. They've got a lot On that of guys that go both ways. Last little bubble screen. Great block by Bishop, and he's kind of missed everything, so keep an eye on him today, too. Counterplay. This is fine, and he is stacked up at the line of scrimmage by the Bobcat and, D. And this is what the Greenbrier defense does best. They're not big and imposing. What they are is quick and agile, and they get themselves into gaps very quickly. Watch right here. They're not as big as Fulton, but they get into gaps and they swarm like a bunch of bees. And they all they all they pester you. There's play. no question. They're hard to contain because you don't know where they're going. Fulton will have second down and long. Fulton won at Smith County in the semifinal last week, 33 to six. Here's the toss sweep. Fine, picking his way, gets back to line of scrimmage, falls forward for a yard, and again, Justin Pig was there to meet and him. And we talked about Jacob Aldridge, the quarterback. Take a look at Jacob Aldridge, the cornerback, does a, a, a phenomenal job of forcing the play back inside. He's the end man on the line. He knows his responsibilities to turn it back where all his green jerseys are, and Pig cleans it up just like he's supposed to. A, a very good middle linebacker is Pig. So third and long, the first third down situation. A little shotgun. And Fulton will go from the shotgun. Young calls for it. Flag is down. Oh. Under pressure is Young. He's going to try to run for it. And he's out of bounds, shy of the first down. So we'll check the flag. And I think it might be a hold on the offense. So Fulton will send the punt unit out. Buck Cotney will send his punting unit onto the field. Don't procedure on the It's offense. procedure against Fulton and likely that will be declined. It'll be fourth in about three. Right, it's not one of the big men up front. It was one of the people on the edge. And a nice pickup on the on the blitz right there by the back. And then off, off goes the quarterback, Young. So it's fourth and more like two. Illegal formation. Six men on the line of scrimmage. That field is declined. 
Fourth down. Fourth down. There you go. And out of the field to punt. Uh, you know, this is a great time, believe it or not, for a fake. I know it sounds crazy, Willie. You're at, you're at the 45-yard line. You've been here. There's probably a little jitters on the other side. Why not try a fake right here? Ryan Ferguson. I don't think so. <laughs> Boots it away. High kick and short. Coming up to get it is Herndon. And he makes the fair catch at the 32. So this will be Greenbrier's first shot on offense. And the Bobcats have to feel good about their first defensive right. possession. And, and really, they, they do feel good. I'm sure they just shut him down. A nice job by the defense at Greenbrier. They bent a little bit. They shut it down in the middle of the field. And they have decent field position at the 32-yard line. And now they have a chance to get on track for the first drive. Greenbrier runs the wing tee. And we have a timeout down in the field. The referee has called for it. And we have Let's a, find out what's going on. We have an expert of the wing tee down in the truck. Coach Ron Adeloff. His Burroughs run the wing tee. Last night, Huntington was very effective with the wing tee, but threw the ball a lot more right. than normal what, in that what wild game. game that was. What a great game. At, you know, arena football fan myself, so that was very reminiscent. We'll talk about those two great games as we move through the broadcast. Here's Greenbrier's first look. Here's the pitch to Herndon. He's going to get the ball a lot today. He tries to get some room. A short gain on the outside of about two yards. Coming up to make the play was Dennis Rogan from the safety position. I did a Greenbrier game earlier in the year, and I watched this kid, and he you don't realize what he's doing. You know, he picks up two, he picks up two, he picks up four, then all of a sudden he picks up 24. So he's a very patient kid, and it's very difficult at the high school level to be patient. This kid's patient enough to know when he gets a scene, then he makes his big, big breaks. 312 carries on the year for Herndon. They fake it to Herndon. Here's Alden. Trying to find some room, gets outside, switches hands, and he is wrestled down for a short game. And coming over to make the play was number 21, Brandon Winters, the outside linebacker. Winters is a quick guy now, and that's the one thing that, that Coach Williams was worried about. He knows that if Aldridge can get outside, that's great things. And the Fulton Falcons defense was worried about him getting outside of the pocket. Not that time. Third and six coming up. And the Bobcats will spread out the wing tee with wide receivers to each side. In motion is Herndon. Aldridge, a straight drop. Throwing down the middle. Looking for Pig. It's over everybody's head. He had the one-on-one -on -one coverage. And down there with some nice coverage was Marquez Patton for the I, Fulton Falcons. I know it's not a great, it doesn't look like a great play, but it really is a great play. Why? It's a setup play. You're stringing out the defense. You're trying to open up that defense so you can create lanes for Herndon down the road. And that's a, really a great throw. Even though it's not complete, go long, throw long, either his guy or nobody's guy. And there is Kirk Williams, the head coach of the Bobcats, and Roger Herndon has been doing the punting duties for most of the year. Some pressure on him. He kicks it end over end. And it's taken there by DeMarcus, or Marquez Patton, and he drives straight ahead to the 45. We'll take a break. Fulton will have their second offense, offensive possession after the 28-yard punt. Stay tuned. We're just getting started here in Murfreesboro. Barrage today, a little bit more defense. My so style. far. Here's this young. He's going to throw it down the field. Slings it up in the air, down there, and nice in and out of the hands wow, great of defense. the intended receiver. DeMarcus Matthews had it in and out of his hands, and he is the man that can really get down the field. Matthews on the year has nine touchdown catches. And watch who matches up on him right here, Willie. It's number 10, Jacob Aldridge. We talk about him as the quarterback. He reminds, very reminiscent, last night we saw a kid named Drew Akins, who I think is an exceptional football player. He was the quarterback for Boyd Buchanan. This kid is very similar. He's the quarterback on offense, but he's a very good defensive player also. Second down and 10. Screen or draw, this is the time, and this is what Greenbrier is a little bit worried about is their screen and draw packages. Bolton spreads the field on a three-strep drop over the middle and over the head of the intended receiver. Again, he was looking this time for Marquez Patton, the tight end. I'll tell you, and this young was a little bit off with that throw. Justin Pig, a linebacker who we've seen scrape up and make all these tackles in the running game, really did a good job in coverage right there. Steps up, looks for the run. Once he sees there's no run, latches onto the tight end and does a pretty good job man-to-man. -man. A lot of weapons on this Fulton offense, and Kirk Williams said the strength of his team, without a doubt, is the defense. Oh, they no, win no with question. defense no and question. ball control. And what they do is they, they're just, the, they're not overpowering, they're just a stunning, moving defense. Third and 10. 
Ish Young from the shotgun. There's screen, the screen play. And it's wrapped up, but then getting out of it is the running back. Fine. Driving forward for the first down. They had him wrapped up in the backfield. They had it covered, but the second effort gets the first down. And check that. It was the tight end on the screen, Marquez Patton, and for 16 yards. It's just what Coach Williams said. He was afraid if they got into a third down, this screen and draw package might kill them. Robertson had a chance to take him down for a loss, and nope. The tight end bangs his way up. Patton picks up some extra yards right here. Watch. Breaks the first tackle and then just lowers his shoulder. Nice play. Big third down conversion for the Falcons. Here's Fine on a third to the outside. Cuts back inside. Great play. And he may be gone. Herndon tries to run him down and gets him at the seven-yard line. Roger Herndon really had to hustle back to keep Fine out of the end zone after a gain of 31. Just, just what we talked about. Herndon saves a touchdown here. Just with sheer Fine effort. Herndon's a backside corner. But watch Fine. Nice run. Great block right there. They catch them with the counter. What they're doing is they're countering the defensive stunts. Nice job by Herndon tracking him down from behind, but a great play. So Jam Fine off to a good start, over 10 yards a carry, and he got 31 of them there. First and goal from the six. They give it inside the Cobb, and not much room there inside the five. You see how the play calling has changed a little bit for Fulton. They're used to banging it up in there and being an I formation team and a little thunder and lightning inside, outside. Now what they're doing is they're, they're misdirecting them. They're little cross buck action and counter action to try to get the defense guessing one way where their stunts go and cutting back against them. Nice job by Buck Cotney and his staff. There is Buck Cotney. This is the sixth play of the drive coming for his Fulton Falcons. They're trying to get on the scoreboard first. Here's Fine. Straight up the middle. Touchdown, Fulton. Jam Fine goes up. Jam Fine did the bulk of the work on that drive. Got him down there and then cashed it in. And we talk about Jam Fine. Great run, great play, big time touchdown, no question. But I go back to the big fellas up front. Nice job opening up a gap. And of course, the fullback. Watch the fullback clean up. He's the key block in there. He cleans it up, opens the last gap for Jam Fine, and he sticks it in the end zone. Six zip Fulton looking for the extra point. Ryan Ferguson on to attempt the extra point. And he is able to knock it through. No, it is not. He's hooked it. So the kicking problems continue here in Murfreesboro. All teams have had some problems in the kicking game. But Fulton is on the board with the game's first touchdown. The senior Jam Fine into the end zone. Six nine drubbing of Covington last year. So fine looking for back to back, and he scores the game's first touchdown. And first of all, we need to check in with our cart camera, which is outstanding. And today it's brought to you by our friends at the River 107.5. Yeah, they've really given us a great shot, and, and we haven't had the cart cam in a while. So first time we've had it here at Murfreesboro, and it's been a lot of fun. A little different angle. So the Falcons will kick it off. And if you're butt coating, you gotta feel pretty good. You come out, you get first blood, you go up six zip. You don't like missing that extra point. It can always be an Achilles heel down the road. Greenbrier has to settle down and have a real good drive here. I always believe that the return drive is the key response. Herndon will take the kickoff from the six. They'll take it up the right side. And nice get traffic. knocked down at the 24. Good coverage by the Falcons yeah. after an 18-yard return. Yeah. And let's set the Greenbrier offense, which is brought to you by Wendy's. The offensive line is small but quick. Dale Crissel, only 175 pounds at center. That's one of the most undersized centers you'll see, but he's still effective. Backs and receivers. We've talked about Russell. We've talked about, uh, of course, Aldridge, the quarterback. Justin Pig is the guy that has really picked it up. He had a huge run last week in the semifinal victory at Kingsbury, 14 to 12 over in the Memphis area. Greenbrier's second attempt with the ball. And, and up the middle, Pig. Nope, no, it's not. Right on cue. It's, it's Dill. 
And Dill gets all the way. Troy Dill right up the middle for a huge game. The biggest gain of the game for Greenbrier so far, 34 yards. For your curveball. So I saw the two and I thought it was Justin Pig, but sure enough, Troy Dill, the backup fullback, jumps in there. And look at him just gash him right up the gut. Great blocking. You said undersized lineman. What they do, a very good job of is getting angle blocks on those front five. And they really did a good job right there. The center, like you talked about, Crystal works one way and the guard works the other way. Nice job by Pearson and Crystal and Cole. There's a look at Crystal. He just doesn't look like your normal center, but he's effective. Now they go to Herndon, cutting back up the middle. Still on his feet, driving to the 20. And he's inside to the 16. Back to back, big gains by the Bobcats. This is what the doctor ordered for Greenbrier. What they said is, you got one for us. Now we got to come back with some type of sustained drive. They get a first run by Dill, a second run by by right here by Herndon, Mr. Football breaks one tackle, then breaks another tackle, and I thought he was gonna even break the third one. Nice, nice finish. He almost broke that third one and got into the end zone. A great run and a great kick out block by Wade Pearson, the guard on that play. And there are the numbers. Look at the carries for Herndon. That is a workload. Now they give to the fullback. Ooh. And this is Clint Russell, and he is stacked up. Now, Russell is one of the two guys that has been banged up with knee injuries. Let's look at first the Fulton defense, brought to you by Wendy's. Now, the Fulton defense has seven sophomores that start. You talk about turning over a lined up. Antonio Hamilton is one of them, and Kirk Williams noted him as a tremendous force as a sophomore. Then there's winners Cobb and Fine. Cobb and Fine will really do the job tackling. And in the back backfield, Bishop and Matthews are outstanding. Bishop has four interceptions. He is Mr. Everything back there. Their, their linebackers are pretty outstanding too, Willie. Don't 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 kid yourself. Those guys are pretty darn good, and they're very physical. Cobb and Fine, and then they have another Cobb that comes in, the little freshman Terrence Cobb. Herndon gets about four, and Terrence Cobb right on cue made the tackle there. And he's just a he's a true freshman, obviously a true freshman, because there is no such thing as a fault freshman. But he's a freshman. He's only 14, 15 years old, and We'll see a lot of Terrence Cobb as the, as the years go on. So the third down play coming up and a for the Bobcats. Russell is straight behind Aldridge. Herndon to the right. They fake it to Herndon. They set up a screen, and it was not there. That's a good choice by Aldridge, and that's why he's such a, a great part of the offense. People, we talked about it earlier. We talked about the pass overthrown how it was a good pass and this is actually a pretty smart pass too by Aldridge right here there's too much pressure and he knows that something bad could happen if he tries to force it in there he does not force it in there and it looks like they'll line up for a field goal because they know hey half of six is three and it was to Michael Mathis that provided the pressure there that kind of blew up the play and now they will attempt a field goal this is Chris Tucker Line drive, kick, and it is no good. And there's no win, Willie. We've seen two missed kicks now. It's not, I mean, the wind's not killing anything here. I mean, those flags on top of the goal post aren't moving too much. But a good drive for the Bobcats. Absolutely, absolutely. They're able to show everybody that they're able to move the ball. So for their confidence, it's good. Oh, they just were not able to cash in with any points. But they need to shut them down and hold field position right here so they get a shorter field and have a better chance to strike on the next drive. Very important. So there is Kirk Williams. Just like the Fulton staff, the Greenbrier staff all has a long time connection with the program. Many of them played that way. And here's a throw that went nowhere. That was almost a lateral. And it went out of bounds over everybody's head. It went over two Falcons' heads. Well, they tried the same bubble screen where Bishop opens up a gap for Matthews, and this time it doesn't work. A little overthrow right there. Bishop is doing a very good job of blocking the corner and giving Matthews a one-on-one. -on -one. Don't be surprised if you see something come off of that where Bishop shows like he's going to block and takes off vertically down the field. Buck Coaten's setup plays. Second and ten. Three wide receivers to the left this time. Uh-oh. And they swing it down the field back to the right. And a great catch is made. Still on his feet is Patton. Cuts back again, and he's down at the 20. What a wow. catch. The what? quarterback, Ish Young, got absolutely leveled. The ball was up for grabs. 
and Patton made a great play on it. No question. Watch the shot he takes from the blitzing linebacker right here. Linebacker coming right up the gut, lays the wood, makes it count. But watch the watch the result. Nice play by Matthews. We talked about uh, by Patton. We talked about him. The tight end splits out this time, goes one on one, and and gashes him for a monstrous gain. Adam Adcock on the coverage thought he may have had an interception, but Patton took it away from him and gains 58 yards on the play. First down at the 22. I like this little spread out. What they're doing is spreading them out defensively, trying to open up some gaps inside, but Greenbrier doesn't does not let it happen. Good job, good response. That was the true gang green there. Cobb stacked up for no gain. Perry like Osborne, that. Devin Robertson, Dustin Cole all in there. Nice call there, Willie. Gang green. Good call for the Bobcat defense. Who was, who was the gang green from the pro level? Was it the Jets? No. That was the New York Sack Exchange, the oh, Jets. Okay. Back with Mark Gastineau and those guys. The gang green. It was the, the Eagles. Eagles. Gang green. Thank there you, you go. Fellas in the truck coming up with that. Thanks, fellas. Second and ten. Young rolling. Good protection. Rolling. And this one is over everybody's oh, head. Herman, Herman was the closest one to it. I'll tell you. Like I, I said in the open, I really believe this. Roger Herndon, he's very valuable, no question, on offense. And he's missed his football, and many people realize because of, because of his offense. But defensively, he's a more impressive player defensively for me. You see he's made two touchdown-saving tackles, and there he does a great job of covering the tight end on the corner route. Well, the tight end, Patton, has been the man so far. Marquez Patton, two catches for 75 yards. And that'll bring up a third and ten. And this is a key play for the Falcons. They have picked up a third and long on their last drive in the same situation. They're going to throw it out on the oh, screen. Oh, what a play. Down. Picked off, I think. No. Incomplete. What a play. Wow. The defensive end was able to That's knock it Stevens. down. Joey Stevens got the big he's, paws up there. Let me tell you, he's a very good football player. Offensively, he'll make some plays at tight end. Watch this. He knows right now three steps. Stop and get up. Look at the vertical right there. I bet you he plays on the basketball team, too. That is a huge play to bring up fourth and ten. Nice job. And now a timeout is called. And it's decision time for Fulton. We'll see what they choose to do here. This would be a long field goal. This would probably be a 40-yard field goal from this spot right here. And on fourth and ten, Greenbrier has a chance to make a stop here. And they've seen the kicking problems both teams have had on the extra point was one, and then on the field goal for Greenbrier was two. So maybe Buck Coatney doesn't feel quite as comfortable going for a field goal right here. A nice job of reading the bubble screen by Greenbrier. The Fulton Falcons have done a good job of working down the field a second time, and now they have a shot to maybe put some points on the board. Greenbrier's got great fans, if you take a look. They have had a tremendous following over the last few years. They haven't always been a powerhouse, but they have really come on the last few years. And of course, Kirk Williams has really talked about the commitment his team has to the program. They are not tremendously athletic, but they really work hard in the oh, weight room. They, they are very coachable players. It all starts with Herndon and it goes right down the line. A little bit of hickory right there, I told you. Fourth and ten. Key play. Falcons are going to throw it. They're going to run the reverse. Oh. And way behind. And now throwing it. And he's open. Bishop, and it, it is intercepted oh. by Aldridge. He, and he slides down it. in the end zone. And he'll get the touchback. Right. Like, well, it comes out to the 20. They could have had it at the 20. I know I'm greedy. They could have had it at the 22. But great job by Aldridge right there, the quarterback. And this is a slow developing play. They're going to reverse it to Bishop here, Pat. And he's able. he gets knocked way back here. It's an exception. Good job by Russell. by Russell. Russell, the guy with the MCL. He almost makes the tackle for a loss and changes field position. And actually, the receiver's wide open. I think is it Bishop? No, it's Matthews is wide open in the end zone, and Aldridge just comes back and makes the pick when he realized he was out of position. But if it wasn't if it wasn't for Russell getting the pressure, that's a touchdown. So the Bobcats hold, and they have the ball back, down six nothing. That's Pig in motion. They give it to Herndon. Herndon spinning churning and he gets five yards and I told you Herndon he's not overly impressive it's three it's four it's three it's two it's 27 that's his game watch right here nice job by the two linemen 60 and 67 that's Pearson and 67 is Robertson do a nice job of pulling 
leading up, and Herndon picks up his five. So good first down game. Second and five. And they go to the fullback right up the middle. I like Dill again. I like this play. Dill like popped the big play. one on the last drive. And I think he's going to get a few more for a face mask right here. So the but, flag is down. But I do like this play with Dill up the middle. They're so focused on Herndon side to side. They're popping him every once in a while with Dill. Dill had 401 yards on the year. And he has really come on in the playoffs. He had 58 yards last week, 67 the week before in the quarterfinals. Nice block again by Pearson. Open it's a little face gap. mask on the defense. Five yards in the run. First that's down. Five. That's not that bad. It was right at the end as he was going down. Right. And it was Dennis Rogan that just got the side of the face mask by Dill. So a first down carry and then tack on five more. And Greenbrier has it at the 39. Now a straight eye formation from the Bobcats, a different look. Herndon uh -oh. has room. Herndon sneaking down the sideline, gets pushed Ooh. out of bounds at the 48. So he'll be close to a first down, probably a yard shy. And Herndon, again, with workmanlike yardage. Nice job. Look at the wing tee at its best. They had the fullback gash him earlier, so people a little more focused. Herndon gets to the edge, and that's where he's dangerous. And that was close to a hit out of bounds. And it'll be second and one. This, this kid deserves the Mr. Football, I'm going to tell you right now, because he is Mr. Everything for Greenbrier. Now, by no means does he take away from his teammates, but he is Mr. Everything. Dill has the first down, but a flag is down, and this is in the backfield yeah, before the Bobcats, and probably, this will come back. It's probably motion or formation. Illegal shift. Shift. And so this will come back, and this will be key, Pat, because it now will be second and six. Right, exactly, instead of second and one. And there is Kyle Herndon, the brother of Roger. And he's a, good, he's a pretty good player, too. And he'll bring the play in. When you line up the Bobcats student body and you say, pick out the Mr. Football, you would never <laughs> pick out Roger Herndon. Let's listen to the penalty first. Illegal shift on the offense. Five yards, replay, second down. I told you how much they remind me. If you, anybody who's ever been a fan of the movie Hoosiers, they truly remind me of Hoosiers. Just, they're just simple guys, they're hardworking guys, and they're, you know, they just, it, it's pretty impressive. It's pretty impressive. Just workmanlike. That's all they are. A bunch of hardworking kids. Second and six. There's Herndon on the sweep. They've worked this play uh -oh. effectively. He breaks a tackle, and he carries tacklers into the Fulton half of the field for a first down. Really, another thing that really, really impresses me about Herndon is watch the ball security of Herndon. He knows when he's in traffic. The two guards again. That time it's uh, 57 Cole and Pearson. They do a great job of leading up, but Herndon does a, an even better job of just feeling the gap. And once he gets up in there, he knows when there's going to be a little bit of force on him. So he brings that ball just a little bit higher into his, into his chest, and he knows he's not going to give it up. First and 10 from the 42. Greenbrier on the move for the second straight drive. Herndon to the other side. Cuts back up the middle. And he is stacked up inside the 40-yard line. If this were an NFL game, Roger Herndon is truly earning his paycheck because he's, he's had enough carries and enough plays defensively and special teams. Hey, he's, they're going to get their money's worth out of Roger Herndon. He's really a, a workhorse. You said it best, 2,500 all-purpose yards. He's made a bunch of plays defensively. He is that good. He's been held under 100 yards just twice on the season, including last week. He won't be held under 100 today. Now a pass, Aldridge looking, got a man got behind it. the defense, got he's got it! Is. Touchdown Greenbrier, Cameron Arms has tied this game. I told you Aldridge is the, the nucleus, he's the, he's the nuclei of this, this team. When you look at him, he makes the big plays, and there he makes one with his arm. I really, really like Aldridge. I think he's a very good football player, and he pulls it right there with a nice throw. Watch this, sets his feet, delivers the go route, and they just, everybody's biting on, on the run. Let's look at the reaction of the quarterback, Jacob Aldridge, who put it right on the money to his senior buddy, Cameron Arms, who got behind the defense. How now for the lead. It hits the upright and goes wide. The 6-6, six, six. how about that? So we have a and pair of missed extra points and, and a missed field goal. Chris Tucker hit the upright, but we are tied at six with 20 take, seconds to go. Take a look at the flags in the end zone, Willie. They've picked up and kind of, they're more like a swirling wind as opposed to one specific direction. And maybe, maybe it is affecting some of the kicks. So we're knotted up as Roger Herndon leads his team down. Let's watch one more. The fake, the play action. 
Look at the linebackers all up in there on the bike. Even the safety's up there in the box, and the corner must have bit on the motion. Thought it was coming his way, and Matthews couldn't recover. Nice job. Cameron Arms only caught six passes during the season to this point, and the seventh one is a huge one. Greenbrier's modus operandi is really not to throw, but they uh, are keeping Fulton honest now. They have, they have really stretched the defense a couple of times with the deep pass. One was incomplete. That one was right there for the score. Nice job. Not really, now we have ourselves a football game, and they knew it was critical to respond. While we got a moment, let's go down to Mark White on the sideline. Thanks, Willie. You were talking about some of the coaching staff. Fulton has 10 coaches on their staff who are all teachers at the school. That's a little different than the, the game we're going to see coming up for a game. Melrose, only one coach is actually on faculty. The rest are uh, non-faculty coaches. But back to Fulton. Their stadium is named after one of their assistant coaches. That is Bob Black. He has never been a head coach during his tenure there. He is the AD. How often do you see a football stadium named after an assistant coach? Uh-oh. And there's a touchback a call. as Bishop ran the ball down in the in the end zone. So it'll be an automatic touchback. I like this officiating crew. That's an exceptional call by the referee. He knows the rules. If his momentum takes him into the end zone, then the ball is down. That's high school rules. It's not like the pros and not like college right here. That ball is automatically down. If he has, if, if he, the ball makes it to the end zone. And it actually might have been a break for Fulton. Right. That it got oh, to the no end question, zone because he, he was, was in trouble. On hitting, he was planning on bringing it out. But Cotney getting the signal to get the offensive play in. Fulton has moved the ball well. Ish Young at the quarterback position on a three-step drop, loops it out. And this one is heavily covered. Herndon, Herndon came over to break it up. Herndon came over from the safety position. Him and Aldridge. And there's still a man down. It's the receiver on the sideline. That is Elliot Bishop, who has done it all. You talk about a guy that does it all, Pat. Elliot Bishop, who can't come up with this one. He has 44 catches for 950 yards. He's also got 15 punt returns, 10 kickoff returns, four interception returns. He, he does a little bit of everything for this team. Uh, I'll, you'll say, I'll say it again. Roger Herndon, we talked about him offensively, but defensively is where he's going to be the MVP of this game if Greenbrier wins. 18 touchdowns for Bishop. And I look look for Buck Cotney to get Fine and Cobb back on track. They really haven't dominated like maybe they should have. Second down as Jam Fine is stacked up. And that'll be the end of the first quarter. So a third down situation is coming up for the Fulton Falcons. It's been an exciting first quarter. Each team with a touchdown. Third down coming up. Yeah. And the way he coaches his squad, and I think same thing with Coach Williams. Two very good, well-disciplined football teams. We're in for a good one today. Third and seven. Young will throw it over the middle. And the catch oh, is made nice. and then dropped. They're going to throw the They're bean bag down. It's a fumble. Herndon has it. Herndon returning it for Greenbrier. And he's stacked up at the 15. A big play. Wow. A huge hit yeah, after the catch was hit. made. I, I wasn't sure whether they would call it complete or incomplete. I'm trying to see. But watch the hit by the safety. That's That scares you on the crosser right here. Nice. He's got it. No question. And arms just, arms lays the wood. Wow. Him and Pig. Watch this. But ba bam Cameron Arms, who just caught the touchdown pass, jarred the ball loose. That is a shot right there, and Herndon makes the best of it. Right there, perfect. That ball's out. It's true. Great you know, call by the official. He lost it call. just before I he agree. hit the turn. That's a good call by the official, and it's an exceptional job by the Gang Green defense. That's my new name for him. Thanks to you, Willie. Well, thanks to the Eagles. Was that the Buddy Ryan? Was that Jeff Fisher was on the Buddy no, Ryan staff? It, it might White, have been. We're going to have to look that up. We're going to have to get somebody on the Internet to pump that out for us. So a big break for Greenbrier. First turnover of the game. Let's see if they can cash in. Big hit by Cameron Arms. Here's the sweep. Watch, watch this. Turned it. Aldridge out there blocking for him. Love that. That's, that, see, now that makes a coach proud. When I see a quarterback toss and then go block, I love him. I'll take that guy. He's on my team. I want quarterbacks that can block. That would be, you know, it's like arena football. you got to play both ways. Same thing here. Quarterbacks that can block. Maybe they can cover. He does it. 
Only two for Herndon on that play. When, when you look up quarterbacks like skills, you know, he says, you know, running, scramble, passing, throws this, throws that. How about blocking? You just saw Kelly Ziegler, who was on the Bobcat coaching staff, a former University of Tennessee star. Herndon is gang tackled by Fulton there. They knew who was getting the ball on oh, that yeah. one. Hey, I'm gonna Antonio say something. Hamilton was all over that play. I'm not going to slouch on these linebackers for Fulton. There's some monsters now, all of them. And you talked about Hamilton. Dom Look at him dominate the line of scrimmage. Wow. And that's just a sophomore, ladies and gentlemen. That's a true. He's a sophomore, and he just dominated the line of scrimmage right there. What a monster. 6'1", 275 as a sophomore. Oh, he's going to be special down the road, too. That is how you're able to lose all those players that they lost off of last year's championship team and come right back. Third down for the Bobcats. Rolling is Aldridge. Throwing on the run. Got his nice. man. It's incomplete, out of bounds. Arms couldn't stay in. He caught it, but did not get the feet down. It's a nice route and a really good Aldridge throw by Aldridge. Intended for Cameron Arms. It's just a, it's just a comeback. Watch watch arms right here. Takes him down 12, 13, 14, 50. Work back outside. Then work back. The smart man. Work back to your quarterback. Ooh, that's close. That was very close. That's close. But you know what? He's there, and I don't I don't doubt these officials made the right call. Well, they had a great view of it. It looked like he came down on the chalk. So that'll bring up fourth down, and another opportunity here for Chris Tucker on the field goal unit. This one's right in the middle of the field. It'll be from about 31 yards out. Uh-oh. And we've got a whistle. Buck Coatney has called timeout. Buck Coatney was <laughs> in the middle of the field. And it looked like maybe he had too many guys on the field. One, two, I can't figure out any other reason why he would call that there. He does. He has 12 on the field. That's a great job. And Buck made 13. He, he, he was all the way out there. He was He's, almost to the hash mark. Yeah, he made, you're right. He made 13 because he was almost <laughs> in there. Well, he played for him. Yeah, so. he was, in, he was He's, inside the numbers. He's used to having the Falcon uniform on there. That's pretty impressive. I'll tell you, he's he really, I've enjoyed the last three years we've we've had these games. He's been the coach here. He's a very good football coach, and these kids come down from Knoxville every year because he, because they're well coached and they're well disciplined. And a lot of credit goes to Buck Coatney and the staff. Well, you look back to last week. They were at Smith County on the road taking on the Owls, and it was a tight, tight game. Smith County got out to the early lead, and then his team exploded in the second quarter. They really got the passing game going. They, they never looked back. They won it 33 to six. Well, they're they're a stout defense. There's no question. They've done a pretty good job offensively. Their defense doesn't give up many big plays. And you see it right there. They've only allowed 100-yard rusher this season. And that was in Week Four against Lenore City. So it's been a long time. And Herndon so He's far. He's knocking at the door already. He's already plowed through for 64. He will hold now for the field goal, and Tucker has nope. missed this one as well. Good pressure coming through the line was Jermichael Matthews, and that might have bothered the kick. So we're still tied at six. The kicking game for both teams has left a little bit to be desired. We'll be back after this. Charge on first and, down. And he's, he's just as good by his own right. He's another tough inside-outside runner. He prefers to be on the edge, and when he gets on the edge, he's very dangerous. But Roger Herndon, you know, people have asked me, what do you think? Does he have a chance to play at the next level? He, he could easily transfer and become an exceptional safety, maybe even a cornerback because of his defensive skills. Offensively, if he puts on some weight, he might still be a tailback or a fullback on offense. Second down and two after Fine picks up eight yards on first down. He's up to 56 yards already in the game on the ground. Fine is the tailback. Cobb the fullback. Bubble screen. Dishon wants to throw it. Runs out of time, moves around, tries to find the marker and does. A very nice job. Oh, and that's going to be an extra more. hit out of bounds, and there go the flag. And that's, you know, and I hate saying this because these kids are playing so hard and emotions are taking over. But, you know, that's another one. You just can't have it. Well, let's credit Ish Young first and foremost because there was nothing there. No question. And then he, he was patient. He didn't panic. And he found the first down marker. Now well, he's going to get rewarded with an extra 15. They were about to jump this bubble screen again, and he knew it, and he didn't want to force it in there. So he takes it down. Then he looks. He says, okay, let me try to get something out of this. And just hustling across, Joey Stevens got to see, got to pull up, son, as soon as you Feel that white, and the sidelines are nice, big, painted in white. Pull up. Dead ball, personal foul on the defense. 
15 yards, first down. I'm gonna tell you again, nice job. I really, the officials, you gotta give the TSSAA a lot of credit. The officials in, in the first two games and the officials in this game have been very, very good. Robert King, today's head referee, making the call. First down for the Falcons in Bobcat territory at the 48. Uh -oh. the ball is uh -oh. loose. It's, it's still loose, and the Bobcats have That's That is a great, great play. Not just a good play, that's a great play by number 50, Klein. Everybody looks, 32 recovers it, and so on. Let's see who forces it right here. The guy that forces it is 44. Or is it 30 foot? It's Adcock that forces it, but the great play by Prime that I'm talking about, the ball's on the ground. Watch how unselfish Prime is. Instead of going for the ball, he knows, take the man and let your buddies get the ball, and sure enough, he does. And number three falls on it. Arms, who's had a touchdown, forced the fumble, and now recovered a fumble. So Tyrone Cobb coughs it up, and Arms be his third big play of the game. The touchdown catch, the forced fumble, and now the recovery. Bobcats have it back. Up the middle, this is Dill, like flag down, coming in late. And it's been thrown back a little That's further, a so this looks like a hole. No question, in there, in the gut of the, in the trenches, and in the gut of the trenches, it's a hole. <laughs> there you go, thank you. When you're in the trench, where is the gut of the trench? The gut of the trench is like when all the bodies are meeting and like there's no seams and somebody's holding in there, of course. <laughs> this is where the ref wants to call You get to, to know it. each other very well in the oh, gut yeah. of the trenches. Come personal. Holding on the offense, 10 yards for pointing the foul. We play first down. The gut of the trench, and, and the referee would know him. You know, we ain't missed meals, him and I. Watch right there. Oh, that's a really in the gut of the trench. See, he's got a leg lock on him. He's getting ready for wrestling season. <laughs> <laughs> so this will be first and long here, first and about 20. As that foul took the place right at the line of scrimmage. Fake All toss. Is rolling, throwing. Got his man, the tight end Stevens. And he'll get a few yards I, back. I really like Joey Stevens, even though he had that silly play on the sideline. I think he's a good football player. Big, tough, strong kid. He's really their only big presence. He does a nice job offensively, too, out of his tight end spot. I think the kid is a, a, an exceptional football player. Defensively, he's a sound defensive end. Offensively, gives you a little weapon on offense too. Stevens has been hot as the receiver. He's caught a pair of passes in each of the last two playoff games. That's his first catch today. Second and 15 after the game of five. Straight at the middle, Dill. That play's been effective for them. And he'll get back close to the original line of scrimmage. And he ran it right back up into the gut of the trenches. <laughs> but this time the ref didn't throw the flag. They have found room with that fullback. And you know what it is, they threaten the edge so much, really. The, 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 the running back Herndon, he threatens the edge so much, and then they have to worry about Aldridge working the edges that Dill has gashed them every once in a while right up the gut. Third and 11, coming up for the Bobcats. This is not a situation they're comfortable being in. Let's see what they come up with here. Brad Martin in motion, uh, and they throw it towards Martin, and it comes up short. That's a great play by the defensive end right there. Number 81, big play right there by Burnett. Watch him come off the edge. Burnett, they're trying to pull with the guard. Number 57, Cole, he can't protect Burnett, who's pressured off the edge, nice job. Big play. Burnett, a junior, six foot two, came in there with those long arms and broke up the play. So fourth down coming up. Fulton does a good job of not allowing Greenbrier to get any momentum off of the turnover. What a nice football game we got today. Back there to punt it is Herndon. Good snap, wow. He drives this kick. The catch oh, made by Pat. Big hit. Well, you hear those shoulder pads pop, and I know you like that. A big time hit there by Thomas Warwick. It's like the old Pop Rocks. And Patton holds on after a four-yard return, a 28-yard punt, and Fulton will have it when we come back. Both sides oh, no, of the ball. The middle linebacker, and he's a good one. Fulton goes back to work. Young to the outside. Oh, good play. Nice job. Screen works. 
And this will be a first down catch. Nice job. Elliot Bishop made the catch and moves on to move the chains across the 45 yard line. That's a, we talked about Justin Pig not being in there. This is where he can be a factor. He would pursue right here. Watch him as he cuts back. This is where Pig would become involved in the play. And it's too late. It's a big game. But Pig standing on the sidelines. The trainer still has the helmet in his hand. He won't give it back. That's the thing that amazes me is the resilience of these kids. We talked about a little earlier about the linebacker Russell. And we talked about Gaines. How these guys want to play. We talked about uh, the kid from, from DCA last night, the shoulder injury, Link. Here's James Fine. Has a seam on the outside and a good gain on first down to the sideline. He's across midfield to the 47. Jam Fine on the turn. Tripped up by number 57, Dustin Cole. And credit Cole with the tackle. Justin Cole went over there. Six foot 205 senior. We mentioned seven sophomore start on the Fulton defense. On this Greenbrier defense, a lot more senior late, three along the front line, two in the linebacking core for the starters, right. and then in the defensive backfield, they're all seniors. And right here, the adjustment is what they did is they put Prime in the middle and they bring in the backup outside linebacker. Second and three, after the gain of seven for Fine. This young on the counter play to Fine again, and he's got first down yardage to the 40. So fine, moving the chains, and Fulton trying to settle down after they've turned it over the last three possessions. Right there, and, and Buck Cotney knows right now it's a big drive. You gotta get something out of this. Fine now starting to pile up the yards. 69 yards on nine carries so far for the senior. Six twenty and counting here in the first half. Fulton struck first. Jam fine, a touchdown run. Bobcats came back on the touchdown pass from Jacob Aldridge uh -oh. to Ames. Back across to the tight end Marquez Patton, and he'll have a first down at the thirty-yard line. Greenbrier, very opportunistic defense. Let's go downstairs for an injury report from Mark White. Thanks, Willie. Justin Pig, the trainer, tells me they were just doing a check for a concussion. He says he's fine, and he will go back in in just a couple of plays. Once again, this is a premier orthopedic injury report. He'll go Good back news in. that he's going back in. He's only going back in if they give him the helmet back. And you know on that sideline, he's itching to get back oh, in. Oh, he's following the helmet. Wherever the helmet is, he is. He knows that's the only way he can get back in. And right now, they need him because he's the middle linebacker that, that would be involved in such a big majority of these plays. Fulton has been able to get it done on the ground the last few plays. Another good game there for five. And then you see Pig, he just wants to get back in wherever the trainer is. He's standing about five feet behind the trainer. The trainers have passed the helmet back and forth, and he just follows the helmet. <laughs> I love it. I love it, though. But the resiliency of these kids is just amazing. You know, they know that it's do or die. It's their last chance to play, a lot of them. Falcons, a methodical drive here. This is a nice drive by Buck Clayton. This time they'll give it to Cobb. Cobb driving forward, has a first down. And, and so his first carry since the fumble, he secured the ball and he got a big gainer. I really like what Fulton has done. They've been very balanced. They've worked a counter, they've worked fine, they've worked Cobb. Expect them to throw the ball eventually within the next couple plays, because if you see what they're doing, they're setting them up, they're forcing the defensive backs for Greenbrier to move up and come on and be involved in some of these tackles, especially with Pig out. Now they're, they're creeping up the safeties. Russell and Arms make the tackle after the gain of 11. Here are the numbers on Cobb for the regular season. He did not play last year, did not play football. Two years ago, he was a big star as a freshman on the middle linebacker. Before. Now he gets it again. Oh, this nice. time he's taken Slide. down after a short game. Oh, Herndon. Herndon came up and, and laid some wood right there. Wow. And meanwhile, on the outside, Bishop and Aldridge are really going at it with downfield blocking. Right, and, and that's the key to big runs. Watch right here. The linebacker gets caught up, so here comes Herndon from his safety spot, gets up and gets involved along with number 41. And you can see on the left side of your screen, Bishop Mark. pushing Aldridge right out of the picture. He pushed him all the way out of bounds. And the, they have really been going at it well, on the outside. Do, the quarterback right. for uh, Greenbrier and the wide receiver for Fulton Bishop. 
keep an eye on that. Right, Aldridge, Aldridge knows that, that he's got to get involved eventually. Oh, the tight end sweep wow. again, and a great wow. open field tackle by Adam Adcock on Patton. They nice. tried to run the tight end across for the second time on the end around play. I and that'll love bring up this fourth play. down. Watch the corner. He knows he's the end man on the line of scrimmage. E M O L S makes that play. Watch this. Up. He knows he's got to turn it in. There's nobody outside of him. If he gets outside of him, it's all over with. Adcock knows it and makes a big play. Big. Five foot nine, 150 pounds. All Adcock makes the big tackle, and that'll bring up third down. Equipment, they're just fixing equipment. They're just fixing equipment. Adcock, helmet got a little jostled off. Pigs over on the sideline saying, well, my helmet's jostled off too. So no gain on the play. Third and eight. They have to get to, to be safe, the three-yard line to pick up the first down. Big play, crowd getting into it. Here comes a blitz, too. Greenbrier fans rooting on the defense. Same. It's the fade pattern to the corner. Oh, Aldridge. Not I'm going to say something. That is perfect coverage by Aldridge. He cuts him oh, off. He just cuts off the route. You can't beat that. The flag is down, though. Watch the coverage right there. Hey, he's in, it's just position. That's all you need. You no don't flag necessarily down. have to cover somebody. You're just in great position. Timeout called, not a flag. My apologies. And uh, Aldridge made the turn on the football just in time. So incidental contact. So fourth down coming up. And Fulton will call their timeout. Right. That's their last timeout of the first half. Right, but, but with, with 3.02, this is such a big play. Right. And they probably won't get it again. It's about. All right, thanks, Scott. Let's go back upstairs here. Fulton tries to go on top. Fourth down. I thought it was going to be a bubble screen. Uh-uh. And I'm done. Scramble. He flips it into the end zone, and it's over the head of Bishop and the Bobcats of hell again. Nice job by the Bobcat defense. A, a really nice drive by the Falcons. They get down here, similar to what Greenbrier did earlier in the game. Took it all the way down and couldn't convert. This time, the Falcons take it all the way down, and they can't convert. We got ourselves a great football game. Both defenses have really My tightened up game, in the red zone. See? Big time. They, they must have known I was here. Both teams have moved the ball between the 20s very well, but when they've gotten into the red zone, the defenses have really made it tough, and because of the lack of the kicking game on both sides, they've been able to keep the teams off the scoreboard. The still tied at six. Ben, but don't, don't break theory. They go back to the money man, earned it. Fighting crew oh, taking oh, some oh, shots. Man. And he didn't get anything. Nice job by our sound crew. Thanks, fellas. Wow. A lot of chatting going on down there, too. Just a little greeting. It's right at the line of scrimmage. How do you do? How do you do? Now you talk about some sounds. Listen to the popping. I know you love this, Pat. <laughs> How can you not like... <laughs> I can't even make those sound effects. No gain on the play. 218 and counting. Bobcats will love to chew up the clock. Right, and remember, the Bobcats deferred to start the game knowing that they'd get the ball first in the second half. Now, the most important thing for them, if they can sustain or let this clock take it all the way down, punt it, don't give Fulton a chance for a short field, or too short a field, and get out of here at halftime 6-6, six, six, they get the ball first. Fulton has no timeouts left. So Greenbrier is probably content to right. run it again here and just see what happens. And if they need to punt it away, just take up all the clock right. that they can. And that's smart. That's really smart. That's smart coaching right there. Third and eight maybe after a, the game maybe two by Clint here. Russell. I look for some type of sweep. Fulton cheats up. Aldridge steps up. He may want to He's throw. He's going to keep it. Oh, Flips it forward. Ooh. He's got Russell. Russell. Tries to feel his way for the mark, and he's got the first down. Was he past the line of scrimmage when he threw that? He was awfully close. I think he was past the line of scrimmage when he threw that. Well, there's no flag down, I and there's no replay. I still think he was past so. the line of scrimmage when he threw that. Well, no we'll replay check it. for them, we'll but check replay it. for us, hopefully. Well, the line, line of scrimmage was what, the 12? I believe the 12. But watch Aldridge just pick his way and then find at the last moment his fullback. I nope. think he was all right, He's right behind at the, the line of scrimmage. You're 100% correct, and I'm 100% wrong. So now the clock running at 110. Greenbrier can easily run the clock out. And they're looking for Morris Herndon. Piles forward, cross, crosses the 30. He'll now be short of the first down. Now they can move the timeout here. 
if they want, but I don't think they want to. I think they're going to just let it run. I look for them to throw it here. John Burnett helped out on the tackle. This is a good time to take one shot down the field, see if Aldridge can connect with someone. Greenbrier does have all three of their timeouts left if they choose to take a shot here. Second down and about a yard and a half. They go to Herndon again. And he is stacked up right at the line. A good play by Antonio Hamilton again. And that'll be a loss of one. And that probably is going to do it for the first half. Boy, Hamilton's a monster. He really is. He's a big, strong son of a gun now. Look at him. Work his way down the line of scrimmage. So as the clock runs down in the first half, each team has had huge opportunities to score beyond what they do have. And thus we have a tie game. Fulton struck first. Greenbrier came back. Each team had chances in the red stone and came up empty. So we'll go to the locker room, tied at six. Our third straight really tight game that we've had. Gotta love it. In this Blue Cross competition. So the Bobcats will head to the near side of the field. Fulton will head out to the opposite end. We'll have some interviews of coaches coming up at the half to play it again, sports halftime update. Murphy Fair, Ron Adelot will be a part of it. We'll have some interviews as well. So stay tuned from Floyd Stadium. Our halftime coverage is coming up now. Difference there, if, if that at all. Um, passing yardage obviously quite a bit different in, in favor of the Fulton Falcons. Time of possession awfully close. Uh, first down's a little bit better on the Fulton side too. But Ron, uh, they've done a, done a great job of bending but not breaking, kind of that old Dallas Cowboy thing of many, many years ago. Yeah, I still think they've got a great scheme. Uh, the big, the big key there and the big stat is the turnovers. You know, Fulton's going to have to eliminate them and Greenbrier's going to have to capitalize on them. 6-6, six, six, we're deadlight, deadlocked here at halftime of the uh, 3A state championship game. Got, got a couple of great more games on the horizon, but still two good quarters here. We'll take it back up to the booth now. Murphy, Coach Adelot, thank you very much. We are getting set for half number two, Greenbrier and Fulton tied up at six, and they broke it down pretty well. Let's first uh, start with Mark White with an interview of the Fulton sideline. Thanks, Willie. We've got Fulton coach Buck Codney with us. Coach, uh, a lot of adjustments probably made at halftime on both sides. Uh, the defense has really set the tone in the first half, but uh, what do we have to do offensively to get more points on the board? Got to hold on the football, and then four turnovers. That, that, that's no you. You come to a state championship game, you can't do that with a good football team like we're facing. And uh, turn the ball four times, we're lucky we're not behind. And uh, a game like this, 6-6 six, six at halftime, could very well come down to a field goal to win it. Both sides, the kicking game, uh, hasn't been that great in the first half. How much of that has to do with the turf, the size of the uprights, different from the high school field? Oh, I think that's big. I mean, you know, the turf, the, 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 uh, I don't think the turf's a lot of factor, but I believe the goal post are, and, you know, it's just a big game. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Good luck, second half. Thanks, Mark, and thanks to both coaches for being so accommodating, as uh, all of them have been so far. Three turnovers in the first half, of course for the Fulton Falcons. And both teams, when you think about it, Pat, it breaks down to this. Each team scored one. Each team had two other opportunities to score in the red zone and came up with nothing. Fulton turned it over on downs a couple of times, and uh, Greenbrier missed field goals twice. That is a testament to two very, very well-coached defensive teams. And if you take a look right there, the forced fumble, the interception, you know, this, that's all big. I mean, that, that's what it comes down to is teams, they bend a little bit, but once they get inside that 20 and it's red zone time, they clamp it up, they get a little bit tougher, and you see right there that's Greenbrier's possession, and, and they turn around and they've missed a couple field goals, and, and that's just the way it is. They've had to punt a couple times, and we're going to see what happens here. I, I really like this type of game. This is my type of football game, very tough, very aggressive. A little bit of hitting going back and forth, and I, I really enjoy Jerry Pearson's halftime interview, and he's got his fishing hat back on. Well, Fulton, of course, has the size advantage. That's no secret. Greenbrier has been up against bigger and stronger teams all year long. Do you worry about fatigue in the second half for Greenbrier? Well, you do, because what happens is when you got a big body leaning on you and leaning on you and leaning on you, eventually they, they wear you down, and sure enough, it could happen the second half. Greenbrier gets the ball first, and they really have to make something happen quick to kind of put Fulton back on their heels, heels again. So Fulton will kick off in the second half. Remember, Greenbrier won the toss to start this game, and they chose to get the ball in the second half. And a good sign for the Bobcats right off the bat. 
is Justin Pig will go in there as one of the deep men. Now, remember, they took his helmet away from him I, I love in the that. second quarter. I love that. That's because he way. got dinged up a little bit. And they checked his neck, and so I, I guess during the halftime, he passed all the tests, and he's back in there at least for right. the time being. And that's a credit to the Greenbrier staff for not taking a chance with, with one of their players. They know. This will be Kyle Herndon on the return. Roger Herndon's brother, he takes it across the field, nice and he gets tackle. slung down at the 24-yard line. And that's winners right there for the takedown. Very aggressive group, this, this full defense. So the Bobcats will go to work to start half number two. Jacob Aldridge, who has a dislocated elbow. You can see his left arm heavily taped. That is not his throwing arm, but he's been dealing with this for weeks. And this is, just shows you, oh, I've seen a lot of stories in the first three, uh, first three games of guys that just did not want to have the surgery because it was their senior year. It. They had to keep playing. Do or die for these kids. Here's the reverse. Oh, nice. Oh, a couple of big hits guy. there, stacking up. Cool. Justin Pig, and he got hit hard in the first half, and they test him right off the bat in half number two. And Pig had a Matt big touchdown run in the semis. Last that's week. Mathis. Watch Mathis penetrate right away, number 42 right here off the edge. Makes a nice play, and then the big fellows come in and make the tackles. So a gain of one on the play. Hard-earned yard there for Pig. Bobcats. And one play they had a lot of success with was that, that fullback dive. Here's Herndon. Here's the count of Herndon. Uh -oh. Not much there. Now this Fulton defense has come out with a little bit of fire to them, and they're great. They're very good at penetrating and pushing. They're big and strong. We talked about it. We talked about how they push up the gut. And that time right there, you see the big fellas just get enough push, and Newman being a part of it. Josh Newman, one of the few seniors playing on that Fulton defense. He played in the game last year. He's got the championship ring. Right, and he's not even a starter, but he plays a key role in giving those big fellows up front a break. So big third and nine coming up. Greenbrier in third and long situations here. This is not their comfort zone. Aldridge on the straight drop. Quarterback fires it oh, over the middle. Nice he had pick, but a Bishop. nice break up there. Coming up to tip it away is Bishop. was Elliot Bishop. And we talked about Bishop being Mr. All Everything. And watch right here from his safety spot. He reads the crosser, and here he comes. Makes a nice play. Watch here, he's on the trail. He knows he cuts right underneath it and gets a piece of the football. He's lucky, Aldridge is lucky he didn't take it the other way. So Fulton is held on the first possession of the second half and Roger Herndon is in punt formation. Uh -oh, high, high snap, snap, a great catch by Herndon and an end over end kick. Oh, and dangerous. fielded by Bishop. by Bishop. He lost the handle for a moment, but a, a gutsy play to come up and field it before it bounces because on this turf, we've seen some crazy bounces. And that ball was going to go a long way down the field, I'm going to tell you, Willie. So a huge play there because it's only a 23-yard punt. And look at where they are on the field. They're, they're right at the 43-yard line. They got a short field to play with. It's always a good thing if you're an offensive coordinator when you come out, you know you only got 43 yards to the end zone. But Hernan was able to avoid disaster right. by fielding the bad snap. Right. So two, green, two little things turn that turned out to be big there. Hernan getting it off, and then Bishop coming up to field the line drive before it bounced. It saved a lot of yards. Bishop looks one way, throws the other. And a nice move on the outside by Bishop. Another nice move. He's to the 20. Elliott Bishop got it all done by himself. He went around two Bobcats. And Young makes a nice throw, nice and easy. One, two, three, get it out to Bishop and let the athlete make some plays. One, two, three, sit, throw, stack route, got it. Cut right there, beat Aldridge, then works up to the next level and forces Herndon to turn it back inside. Herndon really smart, knows he has to turn it back in where all the other green shirts are. And Bishop makes a nice run. Boy, great open field run by Bishop, who came over from Austin East, the rival school of Fulton, to nice. play for the Falcons. I like the shift. I like the shift, and I like the gap right there. Fine runs right into a bunch of green shirts. I, 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 this is a nice job by the Fulton Fulton offensive coaches. They said, OK, here's our adjustment. We'll line up with, with our two backs, Fine and Cobb, to one side, and we'll make it look like we're spreading out to throw the football, and then we'll shift them back into the backfield, maybe have that Greenbrier defense moving around where they can't get a set call. Nice job by Buck Coatney and his staff. Second and seven. This is where the defenses go again. have played their best for both teams. Nice job. In the red zone. This is the third trip for Fulton. They threw an interception in the end zone and lost it on downs. 
Right up the middle, Cobb driving forward to the 10. He'll be right at the first down marker. Let's see where they mark it. Well, exactly what they're doing. They're shifting, so, so Greenbrier gets in a call, and they can't get back out of the call, and it's a first down. This is what they're going to do. Expect more of this, so Greenbrier makes a call. They'll have to adjust. Now the Greenbrier coaches on the other sideline are going to have to think about it. Maybe they can't make one specific call. Jam fine, 11 carries for 78 yards. Tyrone Cobb just had one of his better runs. He's had a fumble today, but six carries for 24 yards. Right, and one pounds it in there, and the other one takes it to the edge. First and goal, just inside the 10-yard line for the Falcons. Ish Young, the quarterback, goes on the sweep to find. Finding some room, he's nice. inside the five, down to the three. This is a really nice offensive drive by Fulton. They had the short field to start with. They made one nice pass. They've made a couple nice runs. They've shifted a little bit to put Greenbrier in a bind. Watch this, they're trying to take Fine to the edge. Here's the toss. Fine fields the cutback of his fullback. Stevens can't make the tackle, and Robertson scraps up at the end. And Daniel Prine saved the touchdown there. He was the only guy left between Fine in the end zone. So second goal from the three. They give it to Fine again, and he is in for the go-ahead score. Kind Fulton retakes the lead. Game. Reminiscent of that first he drive where Fulton young. had success and scored at the end. A nice touchdown. drive. Pass, a run, couple shifts, another run, couple shifts. Get down by the goal line and give it to Fine. Jam Fine, second touchdown of the afternoon, makes it 12-6. And it looks like Fulton is going to go for two. A fine drive. Well done. <laughs> No, they will go into kick formation here. Oh, you have to kick right here. There's no absolutely no reason to go for two. Ryan Ferguson, who missed his first attempt, will try it again. The snap is good. They're oh, going to fake it. Fake. Ish Young fires it into the end zone, into the corner. A great catch oh, in ball. the end zone. Two points. What a catch in the corner by Marquez Patton. Oh, you talk about throwing it to the flag and hoping the guy can go get it. That He That's used nice every spot. bit of real estate on the field. Nice spot and a great job by Patton keeping his feet in. Set, throw, good spot, and it forces Greenbrier if they score to go for two. What a catch and what a job by footwork by Patton. Greenbrier was not fooled whatsoever. Cameron Arms was right there. Just a great play by Patton. It's 14-6. Watch the footwork. We were flying to the West Coast. And, and Hamilton, those two guys getting ready to get back on the field and make some, some magic defensively. Full. I mean, those two guys have been stout, very stout, shutting down that Greenbrier running attack. The Greenbrier is at a critical point here. Yeah. They failed to do much on their first possession. Then Fulton comes right down the field on them. Greenbrier looks like they're bending a little bit here. They right. need to dig down deep here for the and, second and we win. we talked about it just in this little break we have. We said, hey, look, if, if Coach Williams right there has any magic, any special plays, he needs to get ready to pull them out. Here's the boot. Herndon's going to take it at the 10. Herndon angles, looks for room. Great cut to the outside and a beautiful tackle there. Nice tackle by, by number 25, Dennis Freeney. He saved a big gainer as Herndon Looked like he was breaking into daylight. A, a nice job. He got 24 yards as it was. One thing I love is that Fulton uses a lot of their freshmen and sophomores on all their special teams. And right here is another sophomore making a play. Getting down low. Good job. Uh, he uses these freshmen and sophomores not just to give them experience, but to give them confidence that he can put them in a big game like a championship. For the Bobcats, we'll start at the 34. They'll go right to Herndon. Herndon. On the seam, tries to turn the corner. Uh-uh. Gets a few yards, but they have they have really done a good job, Fulton has, of adjusting to that play. That's the bread and butter play that they were having trouble stopping in the first half. Defensively, you're seeing the linebackers, winners, Cobb, Fine, all those guys starting to make plays. Ash is involved. These guys here are making plays. The linebackers are doing a better job of reading what's going on in the backfield of of Greenbrier. They're letting them run their play action and all this stuff in cross direction. They're very disciplined. They've disciplined down and started to make a bunch of plays and a bunch of tackles for short games. Second and seven. Aldridge on a straight drop. Under big pressure. Goes down the field and just over the head of his intended target. I'm telling you what, 
Justin Aldrich took a shot. Right, and Tucker, Tucker, the receiver, couldn't make the catch just outside. Watch the pressure again up front, right up the gut, number 21. Winners, one of the linebackers, blitzing. Nice read. Chris Tucker did everything he could to try to pull it in, but the throw was just a little bit off target because of the pressure. And here's third down. Does Greenbrier have a response for this Fulton defense? Alders on a long count. Draw. Draw play to Herndon. First look at this play, and the Falcons are going to run him down. Okay. Great speed by the defense. Gave Herndon no angles. It, it may have been the first look of this, at this play, but I'm going to tell you right now, the Fulton, Fulton Falcons defense, watch them. They read this like their favorite bedtime novels, just sliding along the line of scrimmage. Everybody knows what's happening, and Cobb takes them down along with the help of winners. Look at them. Hey, this Falcon defense, they're no slouch. We talked so much about the Greenbrier defense, but the Falcon defense has been equally as impressive. They're shutting down Herndon now that we talked about the 100-yard rush. They've only had one. They're, they're looking to shut him down again. Herndon gets the bounce this time. And Herndon gets it away down to the 30-yard line. So Fulton will take over, leading by eight after the 35-yard punt. 14-6, Falcons on top. Put a dagger in this in this Greenbrier squad, so let's go. And we have a flag down before the play. And the Bobcats yep. are clapping. That would indicate good things for right. Greenbrier. And and right here, if you're Buck Cotney, you just came Red out ball. of ball start on offense. You just came out of a timeout, and you hate to see that if you're Greenbrier. He went forward. He went forward. He went forward. <laughs> Robert oh, King yeah, left the microphone right. on. He was he's yelling right. over at Buck Cotney. Buck Cotney did not agree with the call. He said the tight end went forward, and we just saw a great job by our camera crew. Nice job, fellas. You feel like Greenbrier, for momentum purposes, has got to get a stop they on just, this possession. They need a big stop, a turnover stop, maybe. Fulton looks like they're really getting in gear. Toss. Here's the toss sweep to Fine. Fine threw a small crack, and he has good yards up to the 35. You know, a big play on first and 15. And this is what we talked about in the open. Fine works the edges, Cobb works the inside, and Fine does a nice job of reading the blocking scheme. Watch him here as he works the edge on the toss. He sees his tackle gets up, his tight end has the edge, his guard's pulling around. Get the seam, switch the ball to the outside arm, work to the sidelines, and a big gain of, of 10 yards. Kyle Herndon. Made the stop. Fine knocking at a 100-yard game. Up right to 97 there. and counting. Second down and a long four. Fine again. First down across the 40. Oh, yeah. They're smelling blood. Actually, they're going to they're gonna mark him short. He didn't get a good spot at all on that. And well, so this might be a third down, and we've got a Bobcat player that's, down. That's not good. That's Right here, this is, a, this is a perfect example of what you're seeing, that the Fulton Falcons are starting to smell a little bit of blood. And here, number 59 for Greenbrier, that's Osborne, he's down, and he's one of their inside guys, so maybe see Cobb here on third and inches. 59, Osborne is the one you're watching for. This will actually result in a third and one. They did not give Fine the first down after all, but watch 59, it goes down here. Looked like it might have been a combination of, of the pile coming on. It might have been his own man as right. he was taken on the block. He looks like Working checking on his left knee. Knee. Well, he's up, though. Good news. Get him on. Make it the right knee. Perry Osborne, 215 pounds, a senior, one of so many seniors on this team. And let's check in once again with our sideline camera. One of many we've got here, and it's brought to you by 107.5, The River. The River. So you can tell Osborne not able to put weight on that right leg. To exploit it with Cobb up the gut. Jesse Dunn replaces him. And here's the quarterback sneak. And the pile pushes him forward. Oh, yeah. In fact, from behind, Jam Fine came up and gave the whole pile a push. You see that happen sometimes. They used to say that was an illegal play, but aiding a runner like that, but it's when, when the pile is pushing both ways, why not? Yeah. 
pile it up like a little rugby scrum. So Ish Young will get the first down, and, Ish, and that is a big first down. Ish Young has done a nice job of just settling down and managing this offense, and we talked about it. This is the key drive. This is the game-breaking drive one way or the other. So let's see what goes on. First and 10 at the 42. Is Young to find. This has been the bread and butter play. He's got room again. And he's got first down yardage across the 50 yard line. Same play. Greenbrier has yet to he's figure it out here on this drive. Oh, they're going to measure. Watch here. It's just simple. They adjust the formation. They start out with, with Fine on the edge and then they bring him back into the middle. Fine made a good move on Roger Hernan there to get the extra yards. They are going to pull out the chains here and see if Fine got the first down. Either way, Fine is over 100 yards right. on the day. And let's go get more details on the injury to Perry Osborne. Mark White is standing by. Thanks, Willie. Your premier orthopedic injury update. Looks like defensive lineman Perry Osborne. They're working on that right ankle right now. He pointed, said it twisted. It looked like it twisted to the inside. Once again, trainers working on that right now, but that could be a big loss. He's defensive lineman, also backup offensive lineman. And Osborne's got his helmet on. I don't think he's going to give up his helmet. Pig told him, hey, guys, if you get hurt, don't give up your helmet because you'll never get back in. Fine did get the first down, so a gain of 10. And Fine now has 111 yards on the day. Cobb. It's time to give it to Cobb on the seam, and he has got a lot of room. Herndon trying to stop him, and he trips up. Yeah. Cobb at the 20-yard line. But a big, big gain again. Cobb. Hey, this is Tyrone Cobb for 28. This is what you're seeing. You're seeing Fulton's offense in full swing now. The adjustments, they start out, they shift formations. They've been working fine on the edge. Like I said, thunder and lightning. Lightning works the edge and fine. Thunder is Cobb up the gut. And here it is, nice big gash, big seams. Linemen are doing a nice job of blocking. You've got to give those guys some credit. Higgins, Cooper, Angle, Key, and Ash. Fulton starting to pile up the first downs. They're moving the chains. Tyrone Cobb with 53 yards now. And Cobb gets it again. Moving through the green Wolf. shirts and down to the 10. Another big chunk. I like Cobb the adjustment. The this time they take Cobb, they move him to the tailback spot, then they put Fine in the fullback spot to lead. Hey, why not? Brad Martin made the tackle. But a gain of eight. Or Tyrone Cobb. Watch here. Cobb behind his guard. Fine as the fullback. Cobb just barrels up in there. He's got to protect that ball. Remember what I told you, Willie? When you get in those piles, you just slide that ball up a little higher up into your chest, almost to your throat. The less chance of fumbling. Seventh play of the drive. Engineered by Ish Young and the Fulton Falcons. This Fine. worked well earlier. And Fine cutting back. Down Jam at the two. All right, this toss is a is a stable now. What they do is they, they split the backs, not giving them an easy read. Earlier, they, when they split backs, they've been tossing, following the, the fullback. This time, they split backs, and they just straight toss. Nice job by the lineman again. Everybody's securing their blocks, and really, the receivers, Matthews and Bishop, they're going unnoticed, but they're, go, they're really working their way up to the safeties to kind of finish the blocks. And we talked about it earlier, the battle between Bishop and, and uh, the quarterback who's playing corner, Aldridge. Fulton has gone almost exclusively with the power running game here in the second half. In the first half, they threw it around a whole lot more. Wishbone formation, fine, takes it into the end zone for his third touchdown of the game. So Jam Fine has been the star for Fulton. He has taken the load here in the second half and pushed this lead out to 20 to 6. So what can you say as we take a look at the wishbone formation here, Pat? Nice look right here. They fake the dive, give it to Fine, he follows his blockers. Nice lead block there by Dennis Rogan, who was also in the backfield in the wishbone. Ferguson for the extra point. And this one is no good. We still have not had a successful kick this afternoon. And so that keeps Greenbrier within two scores. Yeah, we've had a, a successful two-point conversion, but not a successful kick. So it's 20 to 6 with three minutes to go in the third quarter. Fulton has come out of the locker room, the fresher team, and they it looks like they have just gone with the smash mouth. Right. Remember, in the first half, they were running screens, throwing it outside. 
they've simplified things, I right. think, and just gone with brute, brute strength. They've adjusted. The one thing they did is they went into halftime, they said, okay, Greenbrier is a team that needs to call their defenses and stunt and use gaps to kind of slow us down. Now we'll turn around and we'll adjust our formations. We'll show them one formation. They'll call a defense to that formation. We'll shift into something different, and they can't adjust to it because they don't have enough time. Fulton will kick it off. I really like the kickoff coverage team of Fulton. I mean, the young guys just run down like a bunch of madmen. There is Dennis Freeney, who made that good tackle on the kickoff return last time. He'll boot it with the toe. And Herndon will be back to receive it again. Greenbrier needs a big play somewhere to get right back into this game. They got knocked to the deck in the first quarter, then bounced right back to tie it. Had a chance to take the lead in the first half after a couple of turnovers and couldn't cash in. Here's Herndon around the edge and wrestled down. The young guy's got him again. This time it's Cobb. Nope, not Cobb. 24. Dennis Rogan on the tackle. Another sophomore, one of those young guys you're talking about. Fulton starts seven sophomores on defense. A 17-yard return. So think about this. It, the teams that have won so far, DCA, much like Greenbrier, a senior-laden team. Right. Last night, the two teams that played in the 2A game, Huntington and Alcoa, very young teams. Alcoa has almost everybody back. Fulton will have almost everybody back next year as well. Greenbrier, much like DCA, a lot of seniors. Up right. the middle, Just the fullback work. Dill. Plays Dill worked earlier. About four or five yards on first down. It's worked earlier as a nice offset. And sure enough, it does again. You know, one thing, last night in last night's game, the sophomore for Huntington is a super soft. I'll tell you right now, he might be the best sophomore I've seen so far this season. Last night, if you missed it, DCA was down 24-7 to at the half, came all the way back and won in overtime. And in the second game, Huntington was down 13 to nothing and 20-6, to then went ahead 34 or 41-26 before Alcoa came back and won 52-41 in an epic. <laughs> it was amazing. It was 34-26 at the half of that game. It was a great one. It was a shootout. And there you see number 59, Osborne, on the sideline. I think he might be done for the day. When the ice pack goes on. But they still gave him, they let him keep his helmet. Maybe they figured he couldn't get out on the field. And here's a huge third down and four coming up for Greenbrier. I got enough. They might have his shoe. You know what? They probably took his shoe. Empty backfield. Aldridge will send Pig in motion. Aldridge rolling. Oh, nice roll. Looking for Pig, and Pig cannot come up with it. Good, good coverage on the play. This Falcon defense, Bishop was out there. The Falcon defense has come out and made a stand. I'm going to tell you, Willie, these guys here are very good. They've stood up. They've, made, they've locked up and shut them down. Getting off the field on third down is big, and Greenbrier is just one of eight on third down conversion. So Fulton has done a great job in that situation. And Herndon will have to punt it away again. Time ticking away in the third quarter. Greenbrier two scores behind. Rushes on. Herndon a high kick this time. Fair catch called for. And drop. And Greenbrier's got it. But there's a flag down. Keep an eye on the flag. But this could be the break that Greenbrier needed. If this flag is on, if this flag is on Fulton, this is a big play. Let's check the flag first. Oh! Holding on Greenbrier is the nope. indication. Now they're going to change it. Robert King pointed the wrong way and put everybody in Greenbrier into a panic <laughs> attack for about two seconds. So Elliot Bishop called for the fair catch. Pat, I'm trying to figure out where the sun was, if that might have been a no, factor, but he, think just, he just missed it. It was a different kick, and, and you know what? That we discretion. had a hold on White during the return. That field is declined. First down. Discretion may have been the better part. Leave that ball alone. So Dale, right here. Dale Crystal was the right man in the right spot, the center. Greenbrier must, I'm going to say it here, they must score. If they don't, this game is over. So let's see if this puts some energy back into Greenbrier. That's the fourth turnover of the game for Fulton. Aldridge throwing it on first down. He's got Herndon over the middle. That's Kyle Herndon now. Kyle Herndon makes a great catch for first down yardage at the 12-yard line. Nice route, little slant route right in between the corner and the safety. Aldridge does a nice job setting up and just coming right down to him. A one-man route, basically. 
just over the linebackers and just outside of the of the cornerback's reach. What nice a great by catch by Kyle nice Herndon. Catch. Demarcus Matthews is the injured player. It's either a foot or an ankle, it looks like. He was on the coverage, right. and he was blanketing Herndon. Let's yeah. credit Aldridge for putting yes, a bullet right on the money there. Yeah, chip off the old block, Herndon. Looking kind of like his brother, big time player. Boy, how many times do you see it, Pat, in football, where you get a big turnover and then you go for the dagger you have on to. the first down play I, I, right I'm, after? I'm a firm believer as a coach. That's n rule number one. First and ten at the 12 yard line. They need to score. Fulton stacks the line. Here's Herndon looking for room. Not much. Drives forward, though, and gets to about the eight. There was nothing there originally. But Herndon was not going to be denied. He got about four on the play, and it was all him. You know what we haven't seen, Willie, and, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, but I haven't seen Aldridge run the football yet today. And that's something that he's done very effectively. Just one attempt. Second and eight after the gain of four. Greenbrier can pick up a first down. Eye formation. Just outside the two. First time they've been in the eye. Aldridge. Gives to Herndon straight ahead. Herndon tripped oh, up. Oh, what a Good play. tackle underneath by the defensive end, John Burnett. Burnett. He got it in low and got the ankles. He's made a couple big plays from that edge spot. Nice job by Burnett. And, and we're the go time to the will tick away and end the third quarter. So Greenbrier has a big third down to start the fourth quarter. They trail 20 to 6. Go to Herndon. Herndon looking for room. Gets outside. Trying to use his speed, and he wrestled down. Did he get the face mask? It was very close. They slung him down. They might have grabbed it by the shoulder pads. A great play by Bishop to come up. Watch Bishop from his safety spot. He's the end man on the line of scrimmage. We talked about it earlier. Look at that play. He grabbed the jersey and not wow. the face mask. A great job to hang on and wrestle him down. And this is this is it. This is the big deal right here. Fourth down. Goal to well, not goal. They can still get a first down. They can down, get a first down if they can get to the two. But they need this play. This is the whole season for Greenbrier. If you're a Green, if you're a Bobcat fan, this is it right here. It all lies on this. Let's see what Kirk Williams and his staff comes up with for the play call here. Aldridge. Goes to work. Rolls. Looks. Uh oh. Throws back. Herndon on the screen has blockers. Looking. He doesn't have. And it. he'll come up short. Fulton does a great job of reading the play. They never lost sight of Herndon. And they came up and stopped it. And this is what's happened to them today. They've been down here three times and haven't converted anything. Here they set up the screen. He's got blockers in front of him, but watch the linebackers. Fulton right there, that's Cobb, and here come the other fellas. Cobb makes a big time play, and that's why we, we isolated on him before the game. Big, big play by Tyrone Cobb, the junior who played so well in this game two years ago, the 21-14 loss to Ridgeway, where he really turned a lot of heads as a freshman. Did not play last year. It comes back this year and makes the biggest play of the game so far. Stopping Greenbrier and Mr. Football, Roger Herndon on fourth down. So Fulton has it back. They've had success running the ball. This young will throw it. Big cushion for Bishop, and Bishop gets around and gets a big gainer. And so they took advantage of the matchup on the outside there. Right, as they tried to give Herndon a break and they bring in number 15, that's Jeffrey Sanders who gives him a relief on the corner. He's just too tired. Herndon's come back, he comes back in now, but he was, it's not a fair matchup right there. Sanders is gonna be a good player, but he's not quite as good as Herndon right now. Bishop, just so tough to tackle in that open field. He is really shifty. They have, they have some very good athletes on Fulton's sideline. So big first down there for Fulton. Here's the shift. I like it. I really like what Buck Coatney's done. Fulton trying to take this thing home. Fine, cuts back. Cuts again. And he's into the open field. Jam fine down the sideline for a huge game. He's out of bounds at the 31. Wow. That would be the proverbial dagger right there. Roger Herndon ran him out. Watch this right here. Here it comes. Jim Fine finds a hole, and he's gone. Look at this. He knows Roger Herndon. Nice speed by Roger Herndon. He's tired, but still makes a nice play, saving a touchdown. We've said that three times tonight. Jam Today. Fine has really started to pile up the yards. Now 184 and three touchdowns. He is on his way 
to MVP consideration. Now they give to Cobb, the other man in the one-two punch, the thunder and the thunder and lightning, as Pat pointed out, the mix between the quick, fine, and the powerful Cobb. Right, Cobb just, he barrels it up in there, and you expected to see Cobb get it that time because Fine was so tired from running that, that big, long run he just had. So now, Fulton has piled up 272 yards on the ground. That has been the key stat. Slowly but surely, they've, they've started to be able to win the battle up front. Second and seven after Cobb gets three. Cobb again. Breaks a tackle, bounces outside. He's heading for the end zone, and Herndon knocks him out of bounds right at the one. Oh, how about the six-inch line? Herndon saves the touchdown, but Cobb again is able to get it close. 27 more Watch Cobb, for Tyrone. Watch big bully right here, comes up the gut, bounces off his own guy, bounces, and a great block by the receiver. Wow, nice block, and I think it was Bishop again coming down on the safety. Well, the playmakers have all done well for this Fulton team, and it looks like they've just got too many weapons for this Bobcat team. Bishop, Fine, and Cobb have all played well, especially in this second half. From the half-yard line, Young to Fine, his fourth touchdown of the game. And here's your MVP. The senior jam Fine has gotten it done. Three touchdowns in the second half alone, four for the game, and he has 185 yards on the ground today. Wow, and Fulton takes command. Complete control of this game. They came out the second half. They clamped it down defensively. Offensively, they knew what their bread and butter was, the running game. They'll go for two here to try to make it a 28 to six game. Fulton trying to go up by 22. Young flips it, flag down. And, this could and they be may offensive. get another shot here. No, I think this is going to be offensive pass interference as it looked like he ran a little wheel, whirl route where the receiver comes in and then breaks back out, and I think he might have pushed off. He was looking for DeMarcus Matthews. Let's see. Or it could be holding on the defense. No, it's going to be, I think it's going to be on the offense. Yep. And sure enough, good eye by Pat. And Matthews will get called for the penalty, so that will mean... It'll be the field goal, no the, the goal will be no good. So it's 26 to 6 with 9.46 to go. So when Kirk Williams looks back on this up game, if they are not to come back. Eagles decline. Points no good. Greenbrier will be thinking for a while about the turnovers that gave them opportunities to score, which they could not cash in. 26 6 full line to set up that last Fulton touchdown. You can bet nobody wants this win worse than that kid. He was a starter at linebacker as a freshman, forced to sit out last year, so last year he was up in the stands watching Fulton win this championship. Now he's back on the field, and he wants to get his hands on that trophy himself. Good point. As Cobb has come back, he's got his younger brother on the team, his older brother, Reggie Cobb, of course, a famous running back for Tennessee as Dennis Freeney boots that one into the end zone. So Greenbrier will have to start from the 20. And talking to the coaches for Fulton, they said, hey, watch out because honestly, number 34, Terrence Cobb may be the best one of the whole family. Which is hard to believe. That is hard to believe. Two pretty good ones in front of him. Uh-oh, there's Cobb. Uh -oh. Bowles on the ground. It's Cobb on the blitz right there. And Fulton has it again. What a tiny field now, and another Greenbrier player is down. Number 74 for Greenbrier, that's Stratton down. And Antonio Hamilton, again, just blowing away things in the backfield. Watch number 40, Hamilton. Watch 22, Cobb come on the blitz first, right here, and make the hit. And then Hamilton sees the ball and seizes the moment. <laughs> he knocks his own man out of the way. That's James right. Higgins had a beat on it as well. And Hamilton just ferociously picked it up. So Stratton. Tyrone Cobb makes another big play. First turnover of the game for right. Greenbrier. And that was uh, and that was a tough one right there. Down here, short field, and a chance for Fulton to pretty much seal the deal. 
has only allowed one rusher all year to get to 100 yards. I think that record might be safe. And here's a great play by Daniel Prime, who came flying into the backfield to throw jam fine for a loss. And Prime, he's done a good job. He filled in for Pig at middle linebacker watch here, just a simple A-gap blitz. Prime comes through, makes the tackle on fine. He was not going to be denied there. A little Prime and fine. <laughs> Mr. Prime, meet Mr. Fine. If you're a Three Stooges fan, Dr. Howard, Dr. Fine, Dr. Howard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jam Fine, I don't think is related to Larry Fine. No. <laughs> Larry had quite an interesting uh, hairdo with the bald head and the red uh, curlies. And here's another big run coming wow. in, and it'll be a touchdown for Dennis Rogan. Rogan gives Fine a little bit of a break and takes advantage of the short field. So Dennis Rogan gets into the act. He's played well on defense. Just a sophomore. So you can expect Buck Cody's squad to be back in this area. So um, now Fulton has really opened it up. And, and when we look back on this score, it's going to look more lopsided right, than it was. Because we were tied at six, a very evenly played first half. But Fulton just little by little wore down Greenbrier. Yeah, they, they've just yeah, the second half. A lot of credit goes to but Cody and his staff, not to take anything away from Coach Williams and his staff, they just, you know, they just made good adjustments and they had, and they had quite a few more athletes making big plays. And right there again, Young makes a big play to number eight, Matthews. Ish Young to Demarcus Matthews for two more points, 34 to six. And now this is looking a little more similar to last year's final, which was pretty much over at halftime when Fulton dismantled Covington. The final in that game was 36 to nine. Let's go down to Mark White. A quick uh, uh, injury update for you. They're working on the left knee of number 74, Austin Stratton of Greenbrier. He already had a brace on that knee, so they took that off, and they're working on the knee now. About to put some ice on. Doesn't look like he's going to return. Thanks, Mark. So Fulton will kick it off. Looking ahead, two more big games coming your way for Murfreesboro. The 4A state title, title game may be the most anticipated of any of the five games. For a big time battle. Herndon's gonna try to bring it out from the one. And he's gonna be how taken about, down at the 14. How about this coverage team for Fulton? I, like I keep telling you, a bunch of sophomore and freshman players flying down there. And here's another sophomore making a big play right here. Rogan on the simple toss. Nice cut, good read. Lowers his shoulder right there. Got it. And then finishes up with Young to Matthews on the two-point conversion. Little stick route, sits down in the, in the zone. Nice catch, nice throw, two points. So Greenbrier will start the drive from the 14-yard line. Aldridge still in there at quarterback. He threw the touchdown pass back in the first half to tie the game at six. Up the middle it goes to the fullback. Clint Russell on the carry. Russell, guy coming off an MCL, has really played well on both sides, and they didn't know if they'd have him. You know, this, this, this Greenbrier team has nothing to be ashamed of. They've played a tough physical football game against a tough physical football team in Fulton. So both these teams deserve a lot of credit. And you know what? When I talked to Coach Williams before the game, we talked a little bit about, you know, just getting here, first of all, is great. And, you know, the experience these kids have gone through is exceptional. Of course, he wanted to win, and he wants to win, but the likelihood is they ran into a little bit of a buzzsaw in the Fulton Falcons. Aldridge trying to get outside, and he's wow. swallowed up, flagged Ooh. down. This might be a face mask. And I'll tell you what, Jermichael Mathis was all over Wow, Aldridge, but he may have gotten the face mask. And Mathis has made Unless it's a hold. It no, it'll be a personal foul face mask. And that's a biggie. So what would have been a 12-yard loss is now going to turn into a first down. All right, we talked about get your money's worth. He got his money's worth, unfortunately. Let's watch 42 from the left-hand side. Comes up the field. Oh, he's got a handful of face masks. That's not good. He got it off. It wasn't it, that it bad. It looked like he was able. He didn't really jerk it. Right. But it's a big one. Personal foul. Face mask. 15 yards from the point of the foul. Replay second. Replay first. Second down. I thought not an automatic first down. I thought it was too. Personal yeah. foul. I I'm, I'm must be wrong. Could We're be wrong. wrong. No, those guys it took know place the rules. so far behind the line of scrimmage. That's why it'll be second down. Those guys know the rules. We don't. Second and three. 
deep sweep. formation. Sweep to Herndon. Herndon fighting forward. He's, He's very close to the first down. He's See got they it. Mark it. He's got Should it. have it. No signal yet. Nice right, first down. And yes, they will stop the clock and give it to him. Good. Antonio Hamilton, another tackle. I'll tell you, the defense, you're right. Hamilton, you said it earlier, Willie. Hamilton is a big old sophomore monster up front. Watch this big guy. Penetration instantly, and then he he's relentless. I mean, 6'1", 275. We've seen some incredible sophomores in these championship games. Between the kid last night, we saw for Huntington, impressive. We've seen Hamilton today. To earn it again. Oh. What a fabulous career he has had, but he has had a tough time today as the Falcons have keyed on him all afternoon. No game for Roger Herndon. All right, he's at 80 yards right now. Bolton Falcons defense is clamped down. Those linebackers, I keep talking about them, they are very impressive. Winners, Cobb, fine. And the two ends, Mathis and Burnett, have done a good job too. And getting and back to Hamilton, we were talking. Well, Kirk Williams earlier in the week, and he was so impressed on film with Hamilton's ability to shrug off blocks initially, right in the middle of the line, and then get down the line of scrimmage to break up a sweep or a trap to the outside. You see 6'1", 275 pound sophomores, and usually they're not nimble like Hamilton is. Hamilton moves around like a little guy almost, like he's 210 pounds. Aldridge hit as he throws. Aldridge has been comes up, short. up, unfortunately. And like we said, he was such a big part of this offense. He has not run the ball. He has not been able to scramble. He, you know, he has not been able to work himself out of the pocket. And that's a credit to the Fulton Falcons defense. Jacob Aldridge is in some pain, you can tell. But he wants to finish this game. He is an absolute gutsy warrior, according to the words of Kirk Williams. He was not a quarterback earlier in his career. But there, they, there was a need at that position. He worked very hard at it in the offseason, and he has run this team very well to get him here. Quarterback draw. Here's all Aldridge getting and outside. This is, and this is exactly what the, the Falcons coaching staff said they were afraid of. Unfortunately, it's too late. Well, you wonder why they hadn't gone to that before. Aldridge has a lot of good yards. And look at him. He's limping back. He didn't look like he was limping on that run. Right. Watch him here. Just a simple quarterback read. He sees it. Draw. Goodbye. <laughs> in a lot of pain, but able to dig down and put it in gear here to That's get the big game. He's just a tough guy. You know, you don't usually equate those two terms together, but you better right now. First down. Clock starts to run at the 42-yard line. Bobcats trying to mount a drive here. Had a trouble in the second half uh -oh. generating offense. And there's Aldridge again, making it happen. Runs oh, into Cobb. Oh, my gosh. That's not fair. I know Aldridge is a tough guy, but, boy, Cobb's not one you want to try to You're run right. over. Get up. It'll be a gain of five, though. It's Cobb and then Hamilton but this track is him what, down. This is what we talked about. This is what the, the Falcons coach is worried Game about. It's a little bit late, five. but it's what it is. Coming up, as we mentioned before, Maryville and Melrose, a pair of undefeateds. And watch out for Kay Thompson, Mr. Football for Maryville, the quarterback. He is a tremendous talent. And Melrose is loaded as well. That should be a great one. And then, of course, the nightcap, an all Middle Tennessee final. Riverdale from right here in Murfreesboro against Franklin. Give straight ahead to the fullback and a gain of maybe one. So that'll bring up third down. Third and about four or five right here, and it's obviously four down territory for Greenbrier. You know, just they still need they, you know, they're down by four scores, so it's kind of a little bit of pride, a little bit of drive inside of them. They're not, they're not worried about. It. They're going to keep fighting, and that's a credit to Coach Williams and his staff, who have been very impressive this year. Fake it to uh -oh. Herndon. Right up the middle comes the blitz. Aldridge gets out of the way. Great shiftiness. Gets it off looking for Pig, and he overthrows, and he overthrows it. Or just to get that pass off or that was something impressive. else. They ran a couple times. He might have just lost his wind. Trainer's checking on him right now. Doing the old Pillsbury Doughboy test. You ever see that? <laughs> they do the Pillsbury. <laughs> 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 see if he's ticklish? <laughs> 
<laughs> Watch him just come right up the gut. Simple, it's an A-gap blitz right up the gut. And down he goes. Ooh, he just kind of fell down hard as Aldridge. Yeah. And he's walking, off. he's walking off on his own. Could be a rib. Should be fine. Could be a rib or could be just the air lost out of him. The scary thing for all the teams at the 4A level watching this game is that so he's many of these Falcons are back. He's a junior. There's seven <laughs> sophomores. Hamilton is a sophomore. Yeah, it's that nose tackle position. And don't forget what they what the coaches said. Watch out for the freshman cop. Sure. They're loaded. Yeah, they'll be back. They'll be in the hunt next year. You'll see. They've already won. They're closing in on their second straight. And meanwhile, on the other side, what a great year for the Bobcats. They're not going to win this thing, but what a Roger Herndon story. Yeah. is going to wind up his career today. I don't know what level, if any, of college football he is going to play, but as we've talked about, what a classy guy, yeah, coach's dream, and what a tremendous high school career he is. I am so proud of these guys. The snap it to Herndon, and again, there's Direct ten white shirts just running Herndon. right at Herndon before every play. Flag is down. This is, uh, I believe, going to be on Greenbrier here. That was a fourth down play. Let's check the flag. All right, and I think Fulton will decline and take over the football and just grind it out and finish off this game. Black State champions. There's no, no penalty on the play. Ball goes over. So they pick up the flag and Fulton will take it. But again, getting back to Greenbrier, what a, just a gutsy squad, tough kids. And I see them, Coach Williams letting some of the younger guys get in the game. Get some younger guys some experience. We'll come back for the final 422. Bolton closing in on their second straight championship. This afternoon, new quarterback in the game. For the Falcons, it is backup Jaron Trotman, who started a bunch of games this year. Rogan. Rogan goes straight ahead for 10 yards. How about this group of Falcon seniors over the last Four years, 39 and four record with their third title appearance right here. And Fulton had never won a state title in any sport until they won it last year against Covington. Now they'll get their second in a row. This is their fourth state championship appearance in football. Of course, we mentioned a number of times today they lost two years ago in a very good game to Memphis Ridgeway. The Roadrunners took them 21-14. The only other title appearance they had was in 1974 where they lost a really tough game by one point to the Fire of the Ryan Fighting Irish. Here's Rogan, Ooh. swallowed up short of the first down on second and short. Rogan had a touchdown run on the last drive. You know, I like this Falcon team. I think they're a bunch of a nice mix of talent. They have some real good athletes. They have some exceptional linemen. Uh, a nice mix. You can expect some good things. Buck Coatney is very proud he should of everything that he has done as far as building the program. I, I asked him how, how it is to reload. He's had almost a, a very different nucleus in all three of these teams. And he said it's because he has great depth in his uh, JV program, his freshman program, and he's really happy about the guys he's able to bring through here at such a young age. Let's take a look at the play of the game. The Wendy's play of the game is going to take place on a fourth down stop here. This is the chance for the Bobcats to make something of it. They had taken advantage of a turnover. They're down 20 to 6, but Cobb wrestles down Herndon, shy of the fourth down, they tried to run, inside the 10 yard they line. They try to run that screen to the, to the back side of the field, and Cobb just sniffed it out. 145 tackles this season. You're right, he came back with a vengeance. I mean, without, without question, probably the defensive MVP of the game, but well, truly the MVP of this out, game has got to be Jan Fine. Back to the east. Well, I think Fine and Cobb both might get a hand in that because they have an offensive MVP. That's got to be Fine. And oh. the defensive MVP would have to be Cobb. An think? offensive MVP will not be that offensive guard, number 75, <laughs> who just jumped. That's Rodney Sims. I'm sorry, Rodney, for calling you another Good sophomore. Ball. False start, five yards. And some props. Big men have met a huge uh, part of this game on both sides of the ball. And here's the pitch. Another short gainer on first and 15 as the clock continues to run. Gain right. of four on the play. A lot of people maybe 
in the Austin East area, which of course is enemy territory for all the Fulton fans watching. Those are the two big woof, rivals. Those two teams will start playing head-to-head -head in 2005. Austin East actually won the region championship this year at 7-0, and Fulton knocked them out in the quarterfinals at Austin East, 28-21, the closest game that Fulton has faced in the playoffs. And so that'll be a game to look forward to at the beginning of next year. How about the total yards for Fulton now well over 400? Starting to pile it on. And just, I mean, this has just been a clinic. And, and again, I want to keep reiterating how, how happy you know, Coach Williams and his staff need to be and how proud they need to be of this Greenbrier squad because they fought tooth and nail, no question. And, you know, I'm sure when the season started, people weren't expecting them to walk into this championship game, but sure enough, they're here. And don't be surprised if, if Coach Williams and his staff find another way to get back. Dennis Freeney got the carry on the last play. It'll bring up a third and eight. Fulton trying to run out the clock. Quarterback on the keeper, and this is Charles Davison getting a chance to make a carry. Charles Davison is a senior on this team, getting a chance to run a few plays at quarterback here, and that's a nice touch by Buck Cody in his last game, letting the third string quarterback get in there. And while we have a moment, let's thank the Hampton Inn here in Murfreesboro for providing hotel accommodations for all of us who have made the trip in and are working so diligently on these championship games. We have done such an outstanding job. All the, the cameramen, all the crew. Well, I'll, I'll tell you right now. Just a first class operation. They are first class from top to bottom. The cameramen have done a great job getting us some great shots. I mean, guys in the truck, nice job feeding us some tidbits. Thank you. So this will be the final play of the game. As Fulton has the countdown on. The fans counting down on the scoreboard clock for their second straight state championship the coaching staff celebrates congratulations to the Fulton Falcons for state championship in 2004 for the Blue Cross Bowl Fulton in their third straight appearance wins it 34 to 6 teams come across the field to shake hands good sportsmanship a well-played game Fulton little by little their athleticism and their moxie in that second half they really took a tough blow in the first half pat right when they turned it over three times but they survived and when they got into the second half tie they really put it in gear and they were just flat out the better team today yeah i mean they just dominated the second half defensively they shut down completely roger herndon and the rest of that greenbrier offense offensively i love the adjustments i mean the adjustments with formation and shifting back to not give that greenbrier defense a chance to get off Let's go down to Mark White, who's standing by with the winning coach. That's right, we got Coach Buck Codney here. Coach, last year, your school, you won the first ever title for your school. Now, back to back. What a great feeling that must be. Oh, well, I can't say enough about uh, our team. I mean, you start out two and two, and let me say this, Coach Black's been 40 years. This is the best job I believe he's ever done. You know, we take our offensive line, and we uh, I know we were over 200 yards rushing, maybe three, 34 points against a great team. I mean, it's a great job by our kids, and uh, and look at our fans, man. It's a, it's a great day. It's amazing. This was supposed to be a rebuilding year, right? It is, and, uh, you know, I hope we we'll rebuild next year also. What about the play of your seniors, 39-4 and four over their career here? I, I, did, I didn't hear you. Your seniors, 39-4 and four is the record they're walking out with. That's a pretty good record. I didn't know that. And, you know, you got Marcus Patton and Jam Fine, guys like that, boys. I mean, I take those guys every day. And then you've got a lot of talent returning as well, a lot of the young kids, guys like Cobb coming back. Yeah, we've got, uh, you know, we lose six guys, six players this year. And, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's just a great team. It's, I mean, they've, they've worked hard to, to be where they're at. And, uh, you know, take your hats off to Greenbrier. You know, this, they, they did a great job to get here also. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Congratulations. Coach Buck Cotney. Mark, thanks a lot. Bob Black, the assistant coach who the field is named after. How many assistant coaches have a field name after? Buck Cotney spreading all the credit around. Fulton is the 3A champ. So great job for Fine. Tyrone Cobb, 10 carries for 91 yards. Also a dominant performance on defense for Greenbrier. Roger Herndon in his final game, 22 carries for 76 yards in the losing effort. And all the players coming back Ooh, next year. I don't want to coach in 3A. Uh -uh. <laughs> coming up next, Maryville against Melrose. It should be a dandy. Two unbeatens and two powerhouses. And then the nightcap, 7 o'clock start, Riverdale against Franklin. Riverdale trying to polish off the championship in their fifth straight title appearance.
Fulton wins it for Pat Perduto. I'm Willie Donick saying stay tuned for the 4A title. George Plaster and Frank Wycheck will be on the call right here on the station you're watching.